Hey guys, it's Christine here, and I want to talk to you today about an art that I found that I love called Art History Kids. Please excuse my voice. I am feeling a little bit under the weather. Things are kind of crazy here today. My husband is home early. The kids are still doing schoolwork. The baby's still napping, and I have my kombucha and some water instead of my normal coffee. So <laughs> let's power through this together. <laughs> So no, for real, I am so excited to share this with you because I found it a couple of months ago and fell in love. I am not a big person that's typically going to say, yes, you need formal art in your homeschool until I found this curriculum. Um, I have always been very almost against, I guess, having a formal art in your homeschool um, because my kids are very naturally involved in art. They um are extremely good at drawing they do arts and crafts on their own sometimes i lead them in those sometimes they just pick stuff up and do it themselves we have a whole humongous section in our school cabinet just for arts and crafts supplies so i always said we don't need an art curriculum who needs that art history is something i've never been interested in so i just really had no desire to teach it to my kids so I was kind of going into this curriculum a little bit reluctantly because I was just like, who needs that in their life? It's completely, completely changed my tune on art and art history in your homeschool. I am so excited about this. So it is called The Studio. It is from Art History Kids and I do have it all linked for you guys. I've got her Facebook page linked in the post. I also um, in... My post, I have um, the actual curriculum linked for you, and um, I also have her freebie linked for you, so I'll show you guys that as well. So, um, my thing's not scrolling. Here we go. Okay, sorry. Got my little tablet here to show you everything. So, the reason why I love this the most is I'm a lazy homeschool mom. If I can get something that is open and go, I'm going to use that. I love that aspect about it because um, I don't like planning. I have talked about that before. I don't have a planner that I use for our homeschool. I don't like having to necessarily sit down and plan things weeks in advance or even days in advance. I like open and go and I feel that like this is very, very open and go. She does have a list of supplies for you um, for each month because it does go by monthly lessons. So every single month she will send you the new le lesson for that month and then there are weekly plans inside of that. So she'll send you what supplies you need for that month. So there is a little bit of pre-planning, but she's also super duper flexible in the fact that use what you have on hand. Yes, you can use these, but you can also use what you have on hand. So you don't necessarily, like so far we've been doing this for three months and I have not bought anything special. Everything is stuff, which I mean, like I said, we do have a pretty good supply in our own homeschool cabinet anyways. But for the most part, we've been able to use pencils and crayons and markers and clay and just the normal stuff that we normally have in our homeschool. I have not had to go out and buy all of these crazy extravagant. Even today, actually, I'll show you guys here in just a minute. Um, so we're working in cave paintings this month. And my kids, um, we used a candle at the table because she also has a challenge right now about doing art by candlelight, just like they did back in cave people times. Obviously, they have to use some sort of light when they're in the cave. And so we used a candle and so the little, I don't know what it's, ash, I guess, coming from the wick, um, came out of the candle and my kids actually used that in their cave drawings today, which I thought was really, really cool. So I'll show you guys that in a minute. Um, but that, yeah, I love how open and go it is. I love the flexibility that she preaches in all of her studies because um, she is very, you know, let the kids take over the lesson and let them have that flexibility and give them the freedom to do what they want to do in their lesson. So, you know, even though she will give you actual assignments, like today we're doing the cave drawings. So yeah, do the cave drawings, try to just use the outlines. Like she'll give you tips like that. Um, and she also challenged them not to use erasers, which I thought was really cool. Um, so that if you messed up, either A, start over, or B, how can you work that into your drawing? Because back when cave people were making drawings in their cave, they couldn't just erase 
what they were doing if they messed up, right? They had to keep going or they had to just start over. So that was a cool challenge for my kids, especially my 10 year old perfectionist. <laughs> he likes to erase things and make it perfect when he's doing his art. Um, so yeah, so that was a really cool challenge today too, but it's always give them the freedom. If they don't want to use this material, have them use this material, or if they want to do this instead, have them do this. So she's very encouraging of, you know, having the kids do a little bit on their own what they would like to do. Sorry, I keep looking down in this part of my camera instead of here. I have my phone flipped the other way today, so I feel like my eyes are all over the place. Anyway, I hate being able to see myself when I'm doing these. <laughs> um, so giving the kids the freedom, because I feel like that really helps them fall in love with doing art as well. Um, so I talked a little bit in my post about is, um, well, let me find it so I'm not getting too ahead of myself. Um, so I've, another reason why I personally have never loved art is because I had a really terrible art teacher and I can't honestly even remember, it had to have been early middle school because it was before I moved. We moved when I was in middle school and they crushed, they crushed art for me because I've never been a good artist. I have never been good at drawing. I am a stick figure person here in my 30s. That is all that I can draw. I have never been a good painter until I went to one of those like canvas and wine night thingies my friend had at her house. And just because I followed exactly what she said to do, I was able to paint, give me a paint by number, I can nail it. Other than that, I am not naturally good at those forms of art. I can scrapbook, I can sew. I can do that kind of stuff, but I'm not good at art of what you think of with painting and drawing and all of that. And so the art teacher really crushed me when it came to art because I got really terrible grades, even though I was truly trying, they weren't giving me credit for that. And I think that's a big reason why art's never really been that important to me. I've never learned art history because after that I was like, I don't want to be involved in art classes in any type of school setting. So this totally changed my outlook for art because she is just so, so supportive, has those open-ended questions for the kids to have, uh, to do. And um, yeah, I can't say enough good things. So let me open it up for you so you can see um, just, well, first of all, let me get the website up because it is all online. That's something else I love about it is it is all online. So you don't have to have another book, but that's something else important to us. We're moving into a camper. We cannot have books and books and books and books and more books, right? So having this online is amazing. You do not even have to print that much from it. I've only had to print maybe a couple pages because, um, here, let me show you. So in the website, so you just pull it up. Here's the lessons. So the monthly lessons are just like this. So she's got the little picture for the cave drawings. And then one, two, three, four for the weeks that you're going to be looking at. Okay, so we're going to click on week one and it's going to bring us into what's going on for week one with the cave painting. So you've got that. You've got your explanation of what you're going to be doing. Um, I'm going to butcher it because I do not know French, but most of the cave art is from Lascaux Cave. Let's call it that. I should have Googled it before I went on. Um, but it's Lascaux, Lesco, whatever cave in France is the cave that they're focusing on this month. So that's what all of the artwork is going to be from, is from that cave. And so you scroll on. So this one has a ton of pictures. Why isn't it scrolling? There we go. This month has a lot of pictures because it is looking at all the different cave art. Some months you might just be focusing on one painting or one picture or whatever it is that you're looking at. Um, one month we did three different artists with three different paintings. Um, so it just depends on what you're focusing on. So the one month we just did one, what was it? Oh, here, let me pull it up. Uh, so we just had, oh no, that was when we had three. Maybe I don't have the one up. I don't have it up. Okay. So the one month we had three, so it had some trees. That was from a Japanese artist, some different trees from a different artist and um, Clint's very famous tree, which it's funny because now that we've been doing this, I'm like, oh, hey, like that popped up somewhere in the news or in some type of, maybe it was actually when I was looking for decorations for interior decor that that popped up. But I'm like, oh, hey, we just studied that tree. 
where before I would have been like, that's some archery. Why is that showing up for home decor, right? Now I know it's a famous painting. I know it's Klimt's painting. That's something I would have never known before. So I'm learning along with my kids, which has made it even more fun um, because I am. Like I have this art appreciation now that I've never had before. So it'll show you the different pictures and then it will give you some questions to ask your kiddos. So they're very open-ended. What's going on in this picture? What makes you say that? Let's talk about the colors we see. And I loved going through those questions with my kids. There's always a fun um, place to write your observations. So when we talked about trees, she had the pretty tree one. So she always has little places that you can print those out if you want. A lot of times we don't print these out. We will just discuss it. Cause again, I'm wanting to just save on some of that printer ink. Um, so like this, particular month, I don't think we had to necessarily print anything. Um, there was another month where we did the dot painting and I can't remember what it's, the technique is called. Don't kill me. Um, so we were able to print out the couple worksheets that they were actually doing some of the dot painting on those worksheets. We printed just those ones out. So we haven't had to do a lot of printing because we're able to just look at it on the computer. Um, so yeah, so no big books are needed. Not, you don't have to print out every single lesson. You can look at a lot of it just on your computer and I'll just pull it back up for every single lesson. Um, let me try to go back here. My thing is freaking out. It won't let me go to what I want to go to. There we go. Okay. So let me go into like week two so you guys can just get an idea. Come on computer. It's not working with me. Okay. We won't go into that. I don't know, man, it is just killing me. Okay. So you got an idea. So it is, we've got our monthly lesson. We go every single monthly lesson has the weekly lessons inside of those. It's going to tell you what materials you use. So for the cave painting, she gave us a list of materials. She also gave us a list of books that we could get if we wanted it to read more about cave paintings um, to get our kids more into it. And I really, really love those recommendations because that's something that we love to do in our homeschool is, okay, what are we studying? Great, let's find some books to go along with that. It makes it more real life. Um, and especially if we were looking at something, um, I know a couple months ago, they did the wave from Japan, that famous wave picture. Let me see if I can find the picture of it. Here it is. Hey, it's working for me again. Um, the great wave is what it is called here. Let me show you that, that wave picture there. So we love Japan. So we actually are going to go back and do, even that was before we were using this curriculum. We're going to go back and do that because you can get the past lessons as well when you get out of this curriculum. Um, and so that's really real for us because we saw that painting all over the place when we were in Japan. It is on their stationery. It is on different, um, curtains and stuff that they use there so it's all over and so for my kids it makes it so much more real right because they've seen it out in the real world um and so it's really made them connect to paint um and to i'm sorry to different artwork and everything um guys i love this i just can't get even more excited about it so she does have a freebie for you that i want to show you really quick my computer is killing me i'm sorry guys this is being so annoying I think it's because it's not in tablet mode or something and it wants to be in tablet mode. I'm not good at this computer at all. Okay, I'll keep trying to click on it. In the meantime, I'll tell you about this other stuff. So, um, so this one, my very favorite study we've done so far on the trees and that she encouraged the kids to get outside and to find a tree, whether it's in your yard or at the park or whatever, find a tree and to draw it or paint it or whatever you wanna do. She told them to choose whatever medium they wanted and to look at it from one perspective and then go back either later in the day, another day, and look at it from a different perspective and see how different those drawings turned out. So you can see my post, my kids doing those, one chose to do painting, one chose to do drawing. And they so appreciated that, that they are able to see how different their artwork could be just from going from one side to another side of this very same tree in our very same yard and seeing how different their artwork would turn out. And it was really cool for them. Um, this cold is killing me. I feel so bad. This is the worst live video I've ever done. <laughs> I feel terrible, guys. I promise it's my cold. I'm not usually this like, ugh, when it comes to doing this. I was prepared doing this, I promise. Um, 
So yeah, so they absolutely loved doing that one. They loved learning about, you can see my post, I'm um, learning about uh, the point pointillism. I think that's the right word for it, that they are doing some of their worksheets there and seeing how when you combine some of the primary colors, um, just how they look different. And then she encouraged them to do it just with doing little dots and seeing how different it looked. And it kind of blew their mind that from far away, that when you're doing little tiny dots, how it makes the colors blend together so much. Um, and that's how the one painting was. And they were like, holy cow. So I'm not kidding, for like an entire month after that, they were doing that for almost all their artwork that they were just doing on their own that wasn't part of the curriculum. They're making little tiny dots and doing that little pointillism um, for all of their artwork because they just thought it was the best little technique ever. Um, there was one more thing I wanted to talk to you about. My computer's killing me. It's making it so hard to tell you about it. Okay, so we got the open and go. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so let me see if this will work for me yet. Bear with me. I have to, here, I'll go into my Gmail and just open it again. Because that's where it is. It's in my Gmail trying to show you this wonderful freebie. So you can get the freebie, it is in my post. Let me type it in here. Art History Kids. Oh my goodness gracious, okay. Let me just make this a computer again and the tablet so I can actually show you guys what I need to show you, sorry. Okay. Art History Kids. Now we're rolling now that it's an actual computer gun instead of a tablet. I do not like this Windows surface. Don't buy this computer. It's a piece of junk. <laughs> I'm trying to convince my husband that we need, ah, that we need a different computer because this is not working for what I need it for. It's not working for um, my blog work and everything. Hold tight, I'm going to find, let me see this, planner. Here we go, art planner, all right, oh my God, I have it downloaded, guys. Ah, oh, bear with me kids, okay, here it is, finally, my goodness, okay. So your freebie is a 2019 art planner that she has made, and this gives you an idea also of I don't know, just the layout and everything that she has of the curriculum. And I love the colors that she chooses and just the little ways that she does stuff. So, and this has, sorry, I have that right in front of there. So this encourages having a mind map and that just gives you an idea of how she lays out, I guess the brainstorming and stuff that she does in her lessons. Um, in her art planner, she has how to make an art area an art supply checklist of just your common things that you typically need when you are doing art. And this is something you can use um, for any art lesson. So if you are trying to plan out your art, if you're wanting to do art to go along with your history studies, or if you're wanting to have art go along with your nature studies, or whatever it is, or just whatever art you're choosing to do, it doesn't necessarily have to be with the studio, you can use this art planner with that. I love the color she has for this. So you can have your different artists you're studying, your painting and sculptures, just some miscellaneous. This is not showing the beauty with me doing this for you guys. Um, so the link to the art planner is in my post and you can get that as absolutely free. And then she is also doing a giveaway to three people will win a one year subscription to the studio. Holy moly. So. That is insane. That is a really huge value. I think the studio is over $200 a year for, I can't remember the exact price. Um, but yeah, so three people can win. So make sure to click on that link and get into the giveaway. Let me show you some more. So it just has some project ideas so that you can plan out your month with those project ideas, some notes, book lists. And then she has that for every single month. All the fun colors. So that if you are planning your own art studies, you can do that. You can have your book list and all of that for every month. I love it. It is so pretty. Ta-da! So yeah, so it has that for every single month. I'm loving the art planner. 
what else? Oh, so the discount. She does have a discount right now. So in 2019, she did up her prices, which, oh my goodness, she so should because this curriculum is worth every single penny that she's charging for it. But she is honoring the 2018 prices. So in my post, I do have the coupon codes for you. So when you go to buy this curriculum, use coupon codes, you can either buy it monthly or you can buy it yearly. So that's the other really cool thing is if you're choosing to do it monthly, I believe it is, let me go back to my post here. Um, it is $19 a month if you're planning to do it monthly. So you can use it just as a regular subscription, right? So I kind of love that part of it is that $19 a month, I can totally do and fit it into our budget easy peasy. Um, and then if you're wanting to do the yearly price, it is now in 2019, it is $230. The 2018 price is $190. So if you use the coupon code to do the whole year, then you'll get it at the 2018 rate. And the very cool part is that if you buy it now at the 2018 rate, you are locked in at that price. So when you go to get it in 2020, in 2021, 2022, you will always have that 2018 rate when you go to buy it. So if she ever does another price increase, you're locked in at that 2018 rate, which is awesome. So you wanna make sure that's only for this month, it's only through January 31st, 2019 is the only time you can use those coupon codes. So you're wanting to make sure that you go in and you do it before the end of the month. Um, I have them linked in my post 100 million times, so you can't miss it. Any of the things that are hyperlinked in blue within the actual paragraphs themselves are all gonna bring you to the studio. And now that I have it hooked up as a computer and not just as a tablet, I can more easily show you what the other weeks look like. So let me go in and now let's let me click on things. Oh, I know why it's not showing me on that one. Duh. So we're only on week one for this month's lesson is why it was giving me a hard time. I'm like, why won't it let me look at it? Because it was the lesson that's not up yet. So let me go to the studio and go to past lessons. And that way I can show you what the different weeks look like a little bit here. So like in week two, when we were learning about Klimt and we were learning about um, Gogwin and their tree art and everything, she actually is, she goes in, and so this is more of like the art history part of it, is she's going in and telling you about the actual artists. So it has a whole page just on Gogwin and about his life. And it has a whole page just on Klimt and who he was and about his life and about their other art that they have done as well. So that is the really cool part about the history is you're not only learning about their techniques, you are learning about the artists themselves as well. And then of course, encouraging the kiddos to learn more about those different styles and to, um, I know when we were doing all three artists in that one month, that it was really cool to see the difference between their um, different techniques that they used and having the kids make the trees in different ways. And so that really opened it up for them to be like, wow, like you can use it in pencil and you can use it in paint and you can use it in this technique and how different they are. And then they're learning words like impressionism and like things that I never knew about because like I said, I was not an artsy fartsy person. I was not into all of that. And now I'm learning what these things were that I just was like, oh, that's only for sophisticated people. No, it really is for everyday people. Um, so I wanted to show off my kids' artwork that we did today with the cave paintings. So, so a lot of the cave paintings obviously are gonna have deer and buffalo and fun stuff like that. So you can see the shading that he used with the ash or whatever it is that came off of our candle wick, which I thought was really cool. And then my other son just used regular pencil. He loves lizards, so of course he did his lizard outline making his cave lizard, I guess. <laughs> And this is actually a Pokemon, so you know, all about flexibility. <laughs> so again, he used that shading with just using his finger and using the ashy stuff from our candle. So that was really neat for them to be able to, first of all, do it by candlelight, and second of all, kind of try to um, copy what the people in the cave paintings were doing. Sorry, that paused it. My phone was going crazy. Anyway, so that gives you a really great idea of what the studio looks like. I am so excited for you guys to check it out. So make sure to go on the website. Go on the arthistorykids.com website. I have it linked for you guys in my post. 
Um, it will bring you to the studio. You can check out her other freebies because she has a lot of other really cool, if you go to free fun at the top, um, something that I really want to use is she does have, um, let me find it. So you do have to sign up um, to be an email subscriber to get all her freebies, which <laughs> it's free. <laughs> so just type in your email there. Um, I love her museum. Um, she has papers, so just like the art planner that I showed you guys, she has papers for visiting museums and for taking notes when you're visiting museums. Because again, I am not a big art museum enthusiast. I want to go to art museums so bad now though that we've learned just a few months worth of lessons and I am so excited to print those off and again they're colorful they're beautiful they are fun for me to where even I would want to fill them out um but I am excited to go in and use those when we go to an art museum because I know there's a really cool one about an hour from us that I've been wanting to check out and they have some cool hands-on exhibits and whatnot but it's, it's making me in my 30s wanting to go to art museums when I've never wanted to do that before in my life. So not only have my kids loved this and enjoyed this, I've loved learning along with them and I'm not even doing any of the art with them, which I don't know why not. I should start doing that. I'm having so much fun watching them do it. So guys, you need to check out the studio, Art History Kids, find it all in my post. If you have any questions, please, please, please let me know in the comments. Um, whether you're on this post or we go into my blog post, you can go in the comments there. You can also join me over at Relaxed Homeschoolers. It's my Facebook group that I have. Um, this is very relaxed homeschool friendly. This is very structured homeschool friendly. Any type of homeschool you have, this is a really, really great program for you because it will give you your lessons. Oh, I know what else I want to tell you. So we do more of a block schedule in our homeschool, right? So when we do art, we do art in one day. We do it in one sitting. When we do history, we do it all in one sitting. Same with science. The only thing that we split up between the days is language arts and math. Everything else we do more in a block schedule. So this is something you can do all in one day if you want for your weekly lesson. It is also split up in a way to where you could just look at the paintings one day and observe them. The next day you could do um, whatever other little assignment. Let me look in this week's just to give you an example. Da, 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 da. So looking at all the paintings and just kind of answering the questions. Um, she's got that little conversation bubbles for this month. You could go in and fill that in another day. You can um, read a book from her book list for this one another day, and then you could start your drawing on another day. So you could easily split this up between three, four, five days if you're wanting to in your week, or you can do everything all in one day like we do. So that really gives you some flexibility in your homeschool with how you're using this art as well. It is not something that is going to take you hours and hours every single day. This is like a five, 10 minute thing a day if you're wanting to split it up that way. Or for us, it's more of like a half hour to an hour, depending on how much work we're doing and doing it all in one day for every single week. So I'm starting to lose my voice more. It obviously means it's time for me to go, right? So yeah, so it does give you that flexibility in your homeschool for how you want to do it, whether you're wanting to do it daily or you're wanting to do it once a week. But you will still have those weekly assignments. And like I said, my kids have used this as extensions in their own artwork. So even though we're only doing it formally one day a week, they are still going in and making it apply to a lot of their other or other artwork that they're doing all on their own. So it's really made a huge difference of the art in our house and it has made a difference on how my outlook on art is. So I hope you guys will go check it out because it is phenomenal. It will be an amazing addition to your homeschool. So let me know what questions you have in the comments and I will see you next time and hopefully I'll be feeling a lot better and have a clearer head. <laughs> have a good one guys.